Now, if you remember at the beginning, I was telling you how uncomfortable this is for me to do this, and now I'm going to tell you why. I think some of you know this about me already, but when you are looking at me, you're looking at a learning disabled student who grew up. If I were in any public school in our country today, I would be in special classes. I could not read until I was 14 years old. Couldn't do math, still had trouble with numbers. I honestly do not get them. Couldn't write. I mean, can you imagine how I felt times your age? I made up my mind, my mind, actually when I was much younger than you, that there was something very wrong with me, that I was deeply flawed, and that I was stupid, and that I was dumb and pointless. Honestly, I didn't even dare to have dreams. Why should I? They don't happen to losers like me. My nightmare you just witnessed, it was reading in front of my class. And in the old days, I'm not kidding, literally, they used to get you out of your seat, make you come up to the front of the room, open a book, and then stand there and face all of those kids. For me, honest to God, this was like standing in front of a firing squad. The book would start shaking, my knees would start buckling, my heart honestly would pound so hard, you kids in the back row could hear it. I remember hanging out of the book so tight, literally, I broke all of my fingernails. What I remember the most was looking into the faces of those kids, and inside I was thinking, oh God, oh God, I can't breathe. Please don't make me do this in front of them, please. Not in front of them, because they're all going to know. They're going to know now. They're going to know how stupid I am. But I would still try. Didn't matter how hard I tried. My brain changes what I see. I have dyslexia, dysnumeria, dysgraphia, and something called failure of sensory integration, which means I cannot hold still either. So can you imagine being in a classroom where they made you sit and not move? when you can't read and you can't do anything that everybody else does. It was the horror of my life. And what made it so tragic, in my day, there was no one to help us. There was no one that understood learning difference. No one knew in those days. And what was horrifying is when I would go back to my seat after I read in front of all those kids, every single kid in that room, every one of them started laughing at me. They laughed. And I'm telling you, that really hurt. Because honestly, I was doing my best. I, I've come to realize now, most kids, I think they're actually very concerned for another when they see kids that are struggling. They're actually embarrassed that they don't know how to handle it, so they laugh. And in public schools, let me tell you, they're unmerciful. And what made it even worse, you'd think the laughter would have been enough. I had a group of kids that made me their hobby. Oh, honey, they followed me out on the playground. They danced around me. They showed their teeth. I mean, they were like sharks. Among young people like you, I'm always heartened because you kids have had to fight so hard to learn. You don't realize what an advantage that's going to be to you someday. Nothing has come easily for you. And that actually builds amazing character, that you are extraordinary people. I would guess in this room, because I'm looking at your faces and looking at your eyes, there very well could be the doctor sitting right here who's going to discover the cure for cancer. I lost my mother to that disease. I am a survivor of that disease, and as of this last year, so is my daughter. So it's no joke. What if one of you is that doctor? What if you are? What if some of you end up leading our nation? leading people, because you will. You're going to become leaders. You may not believe me, but you will. Because you've had such adversity, you're going to step over all of that eventually and be extraordinary people. And you don't know how lucky you are to be in a place where you have qualified, probably some of the finest teachers in our country, who know how to help you. In my day, we didn't have that. We just suffered. We just suffered. Oh, take advantage of being here. Take advantage of that native, amazing intelligence you have, and you go for it. Because I do believe with all of my heart, you're going to be extraordinary leader someday. Anybody have any questions they want to ask me just real quickly before we move on?
You don't want to know what kind of car I drive, how much money I make. 